What's up guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to simplify the square root of a number. And I'm gonna do that by working through five different examples I have hand selected to help you understand the process. I hope you enjoy. So, when taking the cube root of 54, um, as, as you guys remember from when I was talking about square roots, I really don't like using prime factorization. All right, to me it's very time um, consuming. However, it's a process that always, always works. Always, always works. So it's very helpful in that regard. All right. Um, however, I always prefer, just like with square roots, is to find square numbers that you can divide to. So when we're talking about cube roots, you want to find cube numbers. And what's nice about simplifying cube numbers is there's not that many cube numbers that you're going to be working with. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed is 64. 5 cubed is 125. 6 cubed is 216. But unless you're dealing with some really, really high numbers, these are pretty much basically going to be your major numbers that you guys are going to be dealing with. All right. Hence why I already have these memorized, because we don't really get up to 7 cubed, 8 cubed, 9 cubed. We do for square roots, but not really for the cube numbers. So when I'm looking for this, if I want to simplify cube root, yes, we could prime factor 54. There's not a problem with doing that. However, I always think it's simpler or easier to be able to determine which of these numbers, is any of these numbers divis, um, divide into 54? 27. Yeah, 27. And it goes in there? Twice. Twice. So what I can do is rewrite this as a cube root of 27 times 2. Now, I know the cube root of 27. That's 3 times the cube root of 2. And I can't simplify the cube root of 2, so that's just going to remain as 2. Okay. So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, um, when we're dealing with square roots, you know, you guys are pretty familiar with square numbers. Um, uh, you know, what number multiplied by itself? We know that the square root of 16 is 4. But when we get into cube roots, now we're thinking of what numbers multiplied by themselves. Well, we know that three, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is going to be 27. So we can't take this, the, square, the cube root of 16. However, we can simplify it. So my recommendation to you is when you're doing this is, again, you can use the factor tree. Because guys, it doesn't matter. If you have your radicand, use a factor tree to write it as prime factors. Because it doesn't matter if it's the cube root, the fifth root, the sixth root. You're always going to want to come from the same factor tree. So I break this down into 8 times 2. I break that down into 4 times 2. And that broken down into 2 times 2. So what I want you guys to understand is that the cube root of 16 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Do you guys agree with me? So if you take the factor tree and then write your number as a prime factorization, now to take the cube root, you need to take pairs or you need to group how many of the twos? Three. So the cube root of 2 times 2 times 2 is just 2. And then you still have a 2 left under your radical. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is identify what number multiplied by itself three times gives us negative 27. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I kept these numbers up here because I want you guys to write these down. Here is a list of square numbers. These are all numbers we can take the square root of. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25. Do you guys see that? Yeah. These are what we call cube numbers. These are numbers you can take the cube root of. Because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So what you notice is what number multiplied by itself three times gives us negative 27? Well, we only have two options. It's either negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 or 3 times 3 times 3, right? And it has to be negative 3 because that gives you 3. And this is going to give you negative, th or negative 27. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, a couple things I want to first talk about is talking about square roots versus cube roots. All right. Now, when we're going ahead and looking at determining how to take the cube root, because this is one thing we have not covered yet in this class, um, cube root is going to be something very similar to the square root. All right. And there's two different ways that we learned how to do the roots. And the first way to learn how to figure out the roots was always to apply the prime factorization of a root. Isn't right? Yes, it is. It's just a hard pull for a lot of people. 
So when we're looking into completing um, the prime factorization, it doesn't matter if you're doing square root. It doesn't matter if you're doing cube root. You can always start by applying the prime factorization of that number. So if I was going to do that, I would just take 48. And ladies and gentlemen, again, the prime factorization, we can break that down. You know, we know it's 24 times 2. Then you could do 6 times 4, 3 times 2, 2 times 2. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, if I was going to do this for the square root, I would do 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. For the cube root, I would do 3 times 2 times 2. Oops, I forgot one, right? Now, the difference between the square root and the cube root. For the square root, we always want to pull out pairs, right? Because it's squared, so there's two of them. So I could pull out one pair and two pairs. So I'd have 2 times 2 times square root of 3, which is 4 square root of 3. However, for the cube root, Harvey, let's take a random guess. If for the square root, I'd take out pairs of twos, for the cube root, I'd want to take out pairs of th or groups of three. Not pairs of three. So therefore, that's going to be 2 times the cube root of 3 times 2, which is left over, which would be 6. Does that make sense? OK. So ladies and gentlemen, if I throw one with is the fourth root, how many will you want to take out for the fourth root? Four. So the exact same process of prime factorization is going to be exactly the same. In this example, ladies and gentlemen, what I have is I have the cube root of negative 64. Jake, not right now. So if I'm going to look into taking the cube root of negative 64, again, guys, what we're looking into is what number multiplied by itself, what exact same number multiplied by itself is going to give us negative 64. But remember, that number has to be multiplied by itself three times. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this, and we're going to get into some more, com um, some more complicated numbers um, in soon. But the basic thing I always like to do is when I'm looking into determining cube roots or square roots is I always small start with the smaller numbers. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is actually, yes, negative 64. So I could do the cube root of 4 times 4 times 4. Or since it has to be negative 64, I see that 4 times 4 times 4 gives me positive 64. But remember, the cube root is saying what number multiplied by itself three times gives me a negative 64. And that ends up being negative 4. Do you guys see how negative 4 multiplied by itself three times is going to give you negative 64? So the answer is just negative 4.